off the charts. They probably shouldn't even done the surgery on me. They gave me something, I guess, to bring it down. Or maybe they didn't. I don't know, to be honest. I almost died. Hello. Yes, this is your girl, Queen of Commentary. And we are back with another So So Chanel Chronicle video. This particular video is about her BBL. All right. As you can see, this is a vintage video. All right. So this is not this year. All right. Anyway. You know what to do. Thumbs up the video. Subscribe if you have not already. And cut your notifications on. All right. So let's get Trying into to it. Surgically repair something that exists so deep in my spirit that they literally couldn't cut it out. Um, so all the body issues that I had that I didn't think I had it because it didn't quite feel like it because I knew what I was looking at in the mirror was better than a lot. But it wasn't what I wanted it to be. It did not meet the gold star. Of what my... I don't like saying stuff like that because I don't like to... I don't want to blame my mama. What does she mean she doesn't want to blame her mother? She's always blaming her mother, talking about her mother. In fact, in one of the videos on the So So Chanel Chronicles, she talks about how she left her first husband and she said her mother's blood is running through her veins because her mother was a side chick. This woman literally blames everything on her mom. Everything on everything... Everything on everyone else. She never takes any ownership for anything she does. Yes. And then you notice her husband's back there just chilling. He is not feeling. He's just waiting for her to finish his story so they can make some money. Oh, yeah. But let's get back into it. Oh, one more thing. This is a commentary video. So I will be coming in and out of the video. But Thanks. I want it so badly to stop feeling that way disliking my body, feeling like my body had to be something for me to be successful in my business. On a personal level and a business level, my body was attacking me because the fight really be with yourself. When I told my husband, I said, laying there and I, and I knew my blood pressure was way too high and I didn't know how to get out the situation and in comes the mask. And I just said, now she's blaming her body. Her body is attacking her. The body does nothing without mind and spirit, okay? She could have just said no, but she planned it. She did it on purpose. She wanted it. She knew she smoked, she drank. She knew she didn't sleep. She knows she eats bad food. They eat nothing but hot dogs and live in a million dollar house. Anyway, she knew that she was not healthy enough for that surgery. Not to mention she's also over 40, which puts you more at a risk. Okay? That was her choice. She is not victimized by the man that she went to get the surgery from. I don't feel sorry for her. Even her husband told her not to do it. And she decided to do it anyway. So, yes. This was her choice. My, I just see it in my spirit. Okay, God. Like, that's all I had. Just me and myself and God. And the the insanity of thinking that that was going to fix it. So all of the things my body, my body had been through up until that point. Trauma. Abuse. Childbirth. Now I was adding surgery to the list. And I'm not against the surgery. I did it. I'm against the surgery if you don't even know why you're doing it. Because everything that I thought it would fix, it complicated. Um, my marriage, the intimacy level in my marriage was changing because of how I felt about my body and other things in the marriage were changing. So now I went and subjected my body to full burn. Leather tight, can't touch, can't lay down, can't do nothing. I further alienated intimacy from myself. My body now, it still swells, it still burns, it still stings, sometimes it will itch. Like, 
I don't know how long it will be or if it's permanent. So all I did was add another layer of trauma to myself. And I'm going to be honest. I would do the surgery all over again. But I would do it after I had done some soul searching and some real self-care. Who does she think she's fooling? She ain't fooling me, and I hope she ain't fooling y'all. See, we speak nothing but opinionated facts on this page. If she actually did a self-care and a self-awareness journey, then she would find out that she wouldn't need any augmentation to her body. She would love herself the way she is. She even said at the beginning of the video that she nearly lost her life due to this surgery. So why wouldn't you just say, hey, I wouldn't do it again. Why? Because she's too proudful. She's not even thinking about her audience that's listening to her that could want to follow her footsteps. She doesn't care. She just wants views and she wants you to get drawn up into her trauma and drama. I ain't feeling it. I was like, he would come right over here and me too. Like, he got it. He got it in. He was in and out though. He was in and out. And he prided himself on dragging it out. He was like, all right, how, how was that? <laughs> he did. He was like, it didn't bother him one bit. That just lets you know how our men, how our partners, for people that are in, in uh, same-sex relationship, that just lets you know how our partners sometimes care more about us than we care about ourselves. Because he didn't even care. Like, when he would say to me, your body is fine to me, I would feel like you just got to say that. But here he was, me, purple and blue. I was purple and blue. And he was like, that, that was the worst thing I ever said in my life. My life. It, it looked like it. Let me see a picture. I realized last night in having a conversation with my husband, after watching that show, and, and a lot of conversations we had over the past few weeks. A lot of crazy. A lot of crazy. Right. Right. I realized that the body issues that I had, I didn't even know the depth to which I had them until like tapping in and really talking about the therapy and stuff like that. This is crazy. I'm gonna find this show. I'm gonna show y'all. Violate me. And that's not what the disclaimer. That's not what that's not what I, that's not what actually happened. That's what I felt. That's how it was happening to me at the time. That's I don't know. I'm not speaking on somebody's character no like that. I see it on the internet all the time, and I'm like, I will never ever do that to myself again. This is me post surgery. Just, just nearly dead. like yo but i had no concept of boundaries i had no idea boundaries that is where boundaries were completely they i can't even say they were violated because we didn't even know that they were that they needed setting in that in that situation it was like yo so then i went to another lady down the street from us here and she was doing the surgery she did the tape method then she then she then she looked me up on Facebook and everything changed. <laughs> Said, man. Yeah, I could have gotten infections, all kind of stuff. I, I and I just want to know as much research as I did, I did not. I want to be a hundred percent honest with you. As much research as I did, I did not know there were different types of lymphatic drainage massages. One you should do, and one you most likely shouldn't do. And it is a debate about it between licensed massage therapists and RNs that provide that as a service. So it's not like one is right or wrong, I guess. To me, one was right or wrong. But to some people, they're fine. They do it all the time. But I just, I promise you, it was, it was traumatic for me.
and all of that had just been operated on so it's just you st- it was just it was it was it was nine levels of insane aftercare was about the same as surgery for real And, and licensed and massage therapists, they swear by water. They like, you gotta be on water. I had to drink so much water to make yourself eliminate that. And then we had to do like pushing in my stomach to activate my lymphatic drainage system so I could just start. They had massages. So the next day after the surgery, you go in there, barely able to walk, barely able to stand. You in there with a bunch of women and y'all 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 in there on chairs like this because y'all all hurting and you go in there to get the massage and the lady make you stand up with your hand over your head like this and she tell you hold your eyes open and take a deep breath and she open all your incisions to to let the fluid drain out that was in the doctor's office so i thought it was normal when i got home but they said in the paperwork not to open your incisions after leaving the facility or whatever so why you here like this and she popping them holes and they ain't but a day ain't even a day old. And I, I, I started doing that. She hit me with the smelling salt, brought me back. I fainted. <laughs> I was in that mother like this there. And she hit me with that smelling salt. I was like, woo! She did. She went to rubbing things and I went forward. She hit me with the smell. She was like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> she had the smelling salt. Like, you better try to, you better try to hold it together. I'm gonna keep hitting you. She... She put that smelling salt on me three times, and I was like, yo. I was up here, I'm lighted, and then you start, it's cold, and you start sweating, and you, am I in Columbia? You don't know what's going on, and she just hitting you with the smelling salt to keep you up on the table. The table five feet off, then you gonna fall off the table, you done. So just know, excuse me, it's a lot harder to answer the question, would you do it again? a lot harder than you think. (laughs) It's a lot harder to answer that question than you think.